Nowadays, football has evolved into a game in which everything makes an impression. It's not just about the team's mentality, the players' qualities, or the coaches' tactics. Footballers want to shine differently on the pitch. However, they no longer focus that much on their skills with the ball, but rather what hairstyle they'll show off when they come onto the pitch, whether the color of their cleats match the color of the kit, or whether they will be remembered by a certain shirt number, for example. In this regard, as in many other details, football has evolved a lot since the beginning of this century. Nowadays, we have numbers like Gianluigi Donnarumma's number 99 at Milan, Phil Foden's number 47 at Man City, or Alexander Arnold's number 66 at Liverpool. Oh yeah, and don't forget, Roma's new signee, Angelino, chose a number no other than, you guessed it, 69. Yeah, this is what we mean, guys. A lot of players want the media to talk about them. They want to be under the spotlight with anything but football qualities. For a comparison, in the 80s and 90s, for example, Players' kits have been numbered from 1 to 11 without exception. This made it easier for coaches to better envision tactically how the players would be deployed on the pitch. For example, if you're number two, then you are a right back, and your primary responsibility is to defend the right flank from the opponent's attacks. On the other hand, if you are number nine, you are the center forward of the team, and your role is to score goals in the opposition's net. Yes, before football turned into a business, the game was much more pure and simple, and that is the reason many fans of the older generation feel nostalgic for the romantic past of the sport. However, apart from their weirdness, shirt numbers have also another side, and it applies particularly to some big teams in Europe. Certain numbers are a curse that have been weighing down on those clubs for decades. But which numbers are you talking about, you might be wondering? Well, stay until the end and you'll find out the secret to the most cursed shirt numbers in history. AC Milan's number nine. When we mention the Milan number nine, we think of legends from the 90s like Roberto Baggio, Patrick Kluivert, or George Weah, they were a part of Milan's golden years. And yeah, some of them didn't last long like Baggio, but Weah, for example, became the first non-European and first African national team player to win the Ballon d'Or wearing the Rossoneri shirt. At the beginning of the century, Filippo Inzaghi was another star player to wear the number nine shirt, and it can even be claimed that he was the last really, really successful Milan striker to wear that iconic number. Super Pippo, as he was known during his career, spent over a decade at AC Milan, making around 300 appearances and scoring goals for fun, also winning the Champions League title in 2007. And perhaps the curse of the number nine has a deep connection to Inzaghi. At the beginning of the last decade, Inzaghi crossed paths with Alexandre Pato on the team. The Brazilian originally wore number seven, but after Pipo's retirement, he put on the number nine, and there, Milan's downfall began. For eight years, Milan not only didn't win the title again, the club failed to qualify for the Champions League. Other players like Luis Adriano, Gonzalo Higuain, Fernando Torres, Alessandro Matri, and Kshistov Piontek left their mark on the team but all failed to lift the curse. Right now, the mighty number nine is worn by Olivier Giroud. Yes, he's not the goal machine like Inzaghi or Weah, but it can be said that he is the closest one to breaking the spell. FC Barcelona's number seven. Even though in Barcelona, historically, the most significant number is number 10, given Lionel Messi's period at the club, here we will talk about another shirt, which has been worn by a lot of iconic players. Number seven. Most typically, the number seven shirt is a favorite for many forwards, such as Luis Figo in the late 90s, before he made the most controversial transfer in history, switching from Barcelona to Real Madrid. Before him, Pep Guardiola was also wearing it in the position of a defensive midfielder. After Figo, the most notable names with the number seven on the back were the Swedish striker Henrik Larsson and especially David Villa, who had his prime in the 2010-2011 season, scoring the winning goal in the UCL final against Manchester United at Wembley. Yes, the Spanish forward was an unfulfilled dream for Barca fans, as he left the club after only three seasons at Camp Nou, scoring 48 goals in 119 matches. And then the fall of Barcelona's number seven occurred. After Villa's exit, Pedro Rodriguez swapped the number 17 shirt with number seven, but was never the same again. According to many experts, 
Pedro is one of the most underrated players in modern football history, because he had an incredible talent that would probably have made him one of the best players right now. However, he was kind of unlucky because a superstar like Messi comes along once every 100 years, and Pedro stuck with him in the exact seven in which he was part of Barca's men's squad. And not only that, but Messi was playing in his exact position on the pitch. After Pedro, the Turkish midfielder Arda Turan, Philippe Cochillo, and Antoine Griezmann also wore the number seven shirt, but all failed to live up to the hype and money. Manchester United's number seven. And here we are. We finally reached the two most popular and controversial shirt number curses which we will discuss in the next two positions on our list. Man United's number seven is absolutely iconic because wearing it in his first period at the club, Cristiano Ronaldo became such a recognizable name and not only as a footballer, but also from a purely marketing point of view. CR7 became a brand, an institution that everyone associates with the Portuguese superstar. And nowadays, this brand can be found in all sorts of Cristiano Ronaldo products. Football boots, sunglasses, cologne, merch, and even on his underwear line. But what happened after CR7 left Manchester United for Real Madrid? Well, how would you have reacted if in the summer of 2009, we had told you that in the next nine years, seven players would wear Man United's number seven and would score only 13 goals? You probably would have laughed at us. What a crazy stat. And even though it seems like BS, it is a fact. Ballon d'Or holders, as well as World Cup and Champions League winners, have worn that iconic number, but all failed. Yes, the likes of Michael Owen, Angel Di Maria, Alexis Sanchez, Memphis Depay, and even Mason Mount had the chance of getting their hands on Man United's legendary number seven. But can we praise their performance on the pitch during those times? The player who seemed to have come the closest to breaking the curse was Edinson Cavani. The Uruguayan participated in 22 goal contributions in 39 games in the 2020-21 season, but still, those were just some rookie numbers compared to Cristiano's figures between 2003 and 2009. Chelsea's number nine. And now, probably the most well-known shirt number curse in modern football history, Chelsea's number nine. We have to go all the way back to the 2000 to 2004 period to find the last number nine to have torn down the nets in the Premier League for Chelsea, Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank which, by the way, means that if you're representative of Gen Z, you haven't seen a successful number nine for Chelsea your entire life. How mind-blowing is this actually? And Hasselbank's figures were quite impressive. 69 goals in four seasons for the Blues in the Prem. And what about the players who picked up the baton? Just take a look at their names. Hernan Crespo, Fernando Torres, Radamel Falcao, Alvaro Morata, Gonzalo Higuain, Tammy Abraham, Romelu Lukaku, and Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. Each of them was in top form when wearing Chelsea's number nine, not even an exception, but the curse fell upon them and they failed miserably. Not only that, but some of those players even had incredible moments after Chelsea, like Crespo, Morata, and Abraham, for example. And do you know what's funny? Former coach Tomas Tuchel gave away that now, when new strikers come to the team, their first question is whether they can avoid the cursed number nine. Yeah, maybe that's why Chelsea doesn't have a number nine in their current squad, despite bringing in two forwards over the summer, Nicholas Jackson and Christopher Nkunku, who could potentially take it. And now, it is actually curious who will be the player to break the curse. There are rumors for the transfer of Victor Osimhen or Ivan Toni, so we'll have to see. Brazil's number nine. Well, 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 surprised you with that one, didn't we? Because the other shirt number curses are well known enough, Brazil's number nine doesn't seem to be talked about very much. Let's rewind the tape. In the last 20 years, when Brazil had success at big tournaments, they were always mainly due to other players not to the team's strikers. And who was the last number nine to live up to that hype? The original Ronaldo, of course, the player everyone associates that number with. In the years since R9, other big stars with immense talent and ambitions to be the next big players to bring the world title to Brazil also wore the number nine, such as Pato, Luis Fabiano, Adriano, but they all failed the task, together with some current names like Gabriel Jesus and Rick Carlson. Yes, it is a fact that some had their moments of brilliance with the shirt, but overall, none of them showcased exceptional performances to leave a mark. And that's a wrap on this video for today, everyone. 
For your information, we are running a massive and ambitious project here, so we would love it if you give us your support by subscribing to Footy Flicks or watching some of our latest videos, which you can see right here. Until next time!